Here we go, everybody, from TimCast.com. SNL staff writers boycotting this weekend's episode over Dave Chappelle hosting. According to report, there you go, that's about it. They're not going to do the show. An unnamed insider told the outlet, but none of the actors are boycotting. So the, uh, they say, quote, the room was full of writers. They all pitched ideas and they seemed very excited about it. Dave is looking to have some fun. So uh, that, that was a rep from uh, Chappelle saying there's nothing going on. But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? They want, they want to try and cancel Dave Chappelle? Well, this story first came from an anonymous source that, that, again, came out, didn't reveal who or she uh, was, and said, oh, we're going to be boycotting. Um, Dave Chappelle and his staff are saying, hey, we've been working with the writers and the actors for the last three days. Nothing's changed. No one's really boycotting us. So I think this is just like the kind of Netflix protest that we saw of Dave Chappelle, yeah. where the yeah. media was hyping it up, saying there's going to be thousands of people there. And they were blasting it, trying to make it seem like it was a bigger uh, cause and a bigger reality than it actually was. I think this is also the same thing where you have this kind of engineering of this viewpoint, gaslighting people to make them believe that people are outraged against Dave Chappelle when in reality Dave Chappelle is a comedy genius and what he's done especially with his stories about about trans people has actually been kind of an, an advocacy for them rather than a criticism of it specifically when he talked about his friend so for him to get criticized for this is absolutely absurd I don't think anyone's trying to boycott him and, and if you are trying to boycott a comedian for, for telling jokes yeah, you're, you're taking life too seriously and you're full of crap <laughs> yeah. listen there, you know uh, again Lenny Bruce and George Carlin the likes of those they went to jail over obscenity laws back in the 50s and 60s uh, mm -hmm. it's a damn shame that these things are happening right now there's two places in America you should, when you walk in the door, you should expect to be a little bit offended or at least be made uncomfortable. One's the church, the other is the comedy show, right? Both of them have been watered down so bad. You know, the comedy show, they're afraid to offend anybody. Uh, the, they're, they're afraid to tell jokes. I tell everybody when I get on stage, I say, like, look, I don't care if you're gay, straight, black, white, fat, skinny, male, female, trans, Z, Z Jim, her. I don't care what you are. If I'm going to make fun of myself 75% of the time, I get to make fun of you too. Ridicule is part of the job. You should be able to do that. Doesn't mean you hate people. Doesn't mean you're mad at people. Doesn't mean you want to. You said this earlier. They've never suffered. No, and they so never have. They never the way, the, the, way I, the way I describe it is, you know, I'm sure everybody in this room has gotten physically hurt to some degree. These are people who live in pastel, you know, beanbag rooms. That yeah. you, it was a, there was a university, I remember, 10 years ago or whatever, they created safe space rooms where mm -hmm. if a lecture was offensive, you can go in, there's beanbags and fluffy animals. Yep. So <laughs> if these people have never actually fallen and scraped their knee or anything like yeah. that, when someone says, you're dumb, they go, <gasps> yeah. it's the worst pain they've ever experienced. Yeah, on 60 Minutes this past Sunday night, they had the interviewer, of course, was talking to a college professor, and, and he said, how do you deal with these tough topics? He goes, you don't bring them up. And he said, but isn't that what the university setting is all about? He goes, it used to be. Now you can't discuss. Tough. Listen, our country was founded on the ability to dialogue, disagree, debate, discuss all of these different things and, and fight. I mean, John Adams and, and Thomas Jefferson, at least if you read their writings, they hated each other. Yeah. Right? And that was okay. They were still considered the founding fathers. Mm -hmm. And we, we're supposed to be able to do that and then come back to this thing called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that says, okay, this is what brings us together. You might say something that pisses me off, but at the end of the day, that's okay. I, I, listen, my father used to tell me all the time, talking about one of my brothers, he said, yeah, he's full of shit, but if you listen to him long enough, every now and then you might find a pearl in the middle of it. Well, more, <laughs> more importantly, that, that's a very important uh, takeaway there. <laughs> Sorry, I cut, uh, yeah, no, it's all good. I, I, I cut you off uh, just made me think of my brother and how full of shit he is. Um, but, but, but another thing that's very important to note here is that comedy heals a division in our society. And when you outlaw comedy, when you make people afraid to express comedy, you perpetuate a society where it's impossible to heal any division in it. And I think this is why we're seeing such deliberate actions against comedians, against people trying to make other people laugh, against people trying to bring people together. And this is just absurd to see Dave Chappelle attacked so much where he even has to get serious during his comedy special and address <laughs> all of this nonsense. I don't want to see that. I want to see him roll with the punches. I want to see him address a lot of the critics by making fun of them. And I think even he was someone who is is an anti-establishment guy who is seen as, as a critic of society, said, okay, now we have to get serious during this comedy special, and I'm going to have to address this seriously. I, mm -hmm. I, I hated to see yeah. that. I thought it was a capitulation. And I think they're trying to limit his expression and limit everyone's expression because he's the uh, canary in the coal mine right now.
Mm. But I do think you're right. I think that's all smoke and mirrors, and I don't think anybody's complaining about it. Like, just like the divisiveness in this country, when you see your neighbor across the street, you're not fighting in the street. It really does come from the media. They're like, well, well what do I want them to fight about this weekend? I love yeah. that screen grab of you sitting there holding that bottle of wine. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic shot right there. Uh, but you, you're right about that. I mean, nothing unifies people. Should sh- Comedy and music should bring people together. I mean, listen, you take Jim Jeffries, right? Jim Jeffries, the Australian, he, he's everything I'm not politically. Uh, he goes on these long binges about the, the Second Amendment and how we shouldn't have guns and stuff. And I disagree with him 100%, but I laugh my ass off when I hear him do it. Because it's funny. Because, I, first of all, I've got tough skin. I, I, I can mm-hmm. disagree with somebody and still laugh at what you're saying. Yeah. You know, you're you're not trying. You're not legislating me into something. You're trying to make me laugh. Yeah, let's put it in perspective here. They roast me in the comments all the time. I love yeah. it. I it's saw hilarious. that. Luke. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah, it. Yeah, I was yeah. like, damn. And and it's and it's fine and it's okay because I understand. <laughs> like, hey, this is this is the landscape. I'm going to. Part I'm of the still deal. going to express myself. I'm not going to let these comments affect me. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I know a lot of it is trolling and trying to make me laugh and, and trying to engage. And, sure. and 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 it's totally acceptable. And it's totally okay. And if and and everyone should be okay with criticism. Everyone should be okay with with people, uh, you know, saying something about them. Constructive criticism, I think, is one of the most important things in our society that is needed more than ever and we don't have a lot of that at all people are afraid of any kind of criticism people are afraid of any kind of responsibility and i think we should normalize a society where you could speak truth to power but that right there is being eliminated from our society and it sucks yeah i saw the comments a second ago they said cj was in her 20s and i'm in my 50s i'm liking this ratio (laughs) (laughs) what they think i'm in my 20s yeah several of them said make sure you keep the jacket off it's fantastic i think you're making (laughs) that up right now (laughs) I'm in the comments. I, you know, I, 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 I don't think he's lying. He, he makes up a lot. That's okay. Go with it. <laughs> I'm drinking tequila. You can talk. Call me 20 any day. So hey, girl. Go. But yeah, love you guys in the comments. <laughs> yeah. it, it's awesome to be a part of the conversation. What would we do without those folks? Exactly. We need people like that. Yeah. And if you're mm-hmm. going to criticize me, I know they're going to criticize everybody else. Good. We and, need and, that and criticism. Here's the thing. You know, I had people, for, I, I've always been a, whatever, a creative person. I come up with goofy things all the time. And people used to say to me, and it was the number one phrase, you have too much time on your hands. And I'm, now, now I joke and I say, yeah, I got time to stand in line at the bank to make deposits. But you take Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is eating it up. Like, I, I've met Dave. Dave's a super nice guy. I mean, he's a real person. And, you know, when you got Netflix paying you $70 million to do an hour, and you go out there and you tape over four nights, however many he's doing, two to four nights to do this special, and the bad press, sure, you want everybody to like you, but they don't. And as a comedian, you know. It's like being in sales. You're going to be told no 65% of the time, 75% of the time. This guy's worked in crowds that hate his guts, don't want to laugh at him. And so when the woke mob comes after him, you know, I talk about this in my book, uh, Am I Crazy?, which talks about, you know, living in a woke world and being unapologetic in the middle of it. The beauty of Dave Chappelle is, the beauty of Bill Burr, the beauty of a Jim Jeffries, even on that side of things, they're unapologetic. Yeah. And that's an yeah. extremely attractive thing in every career path you take once you're saying and doing things just to be liked you become pathetic that's exactly and, right. and if you're not questioning things if you're not pushing the needle if you're not pushing the envelope you're, you're doing something wrong when it comes to having a conversation and i think that's what we should all strive to do uh th- there's and see through yeah it's it's yeah. obvious yeah, yeah. It, 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 last week or whenever it was luke bryan he's doing a he's doing a show in florida he brings ronda santis on stage the crowd goes nuts and then of course the online re-rees go nuts t- you're saying oh my god i can't believe you brought this guy on he responds and said when i'm in a state that's been hit by a hurricane been devastated for me to bring the governor on to help these people i was raised to do that right and that was my paraphrase and i was like don't apologize don't effing yep. apologize yeah don't you do it like when joe rogan apologized don't apologize that's an admission of guilt they sense weakness and they're gonna pounce it don't do it you just admitted guilt it's blood in the water 100 percent. and that's why that's why our brand you know everything unapologetic be unapologetic always and and i'm not saying you did something wrong yeah to somebody personally you insulted them or you hurt them yeah go apologize that's not what i'm saying i'm talking about the culture at large own the tweet own the shit you said and just move forward Mm mm-hmm yeah. Absolutely. It's kind of sad, you know, because apologies are supposed to be, it, it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's mature. 
you recognize you did something wrong, you say, you know what, I, I'll own up to that. Yeah. But what's happened now is they've exploited our goodwill to such a, to, uh, to such a degree that now it's like, yeah, you, you're better off just not. Yeah, they, they've abused the better angels. And, yeah. and so, yeah. like, if, if, if this group, if I say something stupid, which I'm apt to do, if I say something stupid and then, and then we go downstairs and Tim comes to me individually and says, dude, that pissed me off, and I'm like, Hey, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry that pissed you off. I didn't mean to piss you off. That's one thing. But, you know, for me to come back in and bring you guys all back in the room and say, look, I made this off-the-cuff statement that I don't even know if you heard it. I need to apologize to all of you. I just made you aware of shit you didn't even know you were aware of. Mm. You didn't even know if you heard it, right? When you do that to culture at large, you are shooting yourself in the foot in a big way. That now you're going Now you're going to have a tattoo on you for the rest of your life. You're marked. Yep. You just told everybody they that you screwed up. They all hear the apology, but they never saw the original. They weren't offended in the first place. You had to tell them they were offended. Yep. Yeah. That's what's wrong with our culture right now. You, you get into a situation, what, what were we talking about? Uh, uh, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, who goes for Halloween, he dresses up like a blind referee. Oh, yeah. That's and the, really whatever, the Association, Confederation, whatever yeah. it is, the United World of Blind People is pissed off and he wants a, <laughs> they want an apology. And I'm like, how the F did they know? He dressed up. They're blind. Yeah. How did they know? <laughs> yeah. What he someone dressed up them. as for Halloween. Yeah, it's true. Somebody had to tell them to be offended. Yeah. yeah. That's they a good costume. Know. The point is, he's a referee who couldn't make a good call. Like, yeah. it's a what good did, joke. Why, why didn't the referees association get pissed off? Yeah, seriously. They have more right to him. <laughs> they do. They saw it. Throw uh, the flag. Man, <laughs> I don't know. The way things are going, I'll just say, watch... These, these people have no principles, and uh, it's exemplified by uh, movies like Black Panther 2. <laughs> no joke. It's fresh I, on your mind. I love I it. I just want it, because, it, because if I could explain what the movie was about and spoil it, it's just like the ultimate hypocrisy you do among it. these woke. You should spoil it. Maybe I'll spoil it in the after show. For those that, I mean, the movie literally just came out. You know what I mean? We went yeah. and saw the early showing. We do it because, one, I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies. I actually thought the story was, was enjoyable. That's not the best. But, uh, man, was that movie racist. And, they, and, and the, same, the same thing with the first one, too. It's like, they, everything they claimed, look, these cancel culture people, they're not offended. They're not even offended. They just, they're just bored online. Mm -hmm. And it's something to do, and it makes them feel powerful or part of something. Yeah. If they were offended, they would watch Black Panther 2 and be like, yo, we better boycott this movie. <laughs> They're not. There's like, the whole thing is just insulting Mexican people. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.